Let's do an experiment. We've weighed out one gram of salt, in this case sodium chloride. We put that one gram of salt in one kilogram of water. Now we take one of our sensors, in this case the GS3, and hook it up to a ProCheck and we could put that into the water to measure the EC. We're reading 1.9 decisiemens per meter. Our little rule of thumb would have said that it should have read 1.4 decisiemens per meter. But remember, the relationship between salinity and EC is only approximately linear. Now we take that water and add it to some salt-free sand to saturation so that there's a little bit of standing water on top. If we take the water out of the soil, it would have an EC of 1.9. But when we make a measurement in the soil, we get 0.5. Now we'll pour the water onto the soil and allow it to drain out until it's at about field capacity. Now our EC reading is about 0.3 decisiemens per meter. So why do we get different results in soil? Why does water that's 1.9 decisiemens per meter not read 1.9 decisiemens per meter when it's in the soil? It was probably pretty obvious, but when we're measuring the bulk EC of the water, we're also measuring the actual EC of the water. The path for the flow of electricity through the water is a straight path. But when there are soil particles present, like there were in the saturated sample that we measured, the soil particles actually get in the way of the flow of the current, and the current has to go around. So the path of current flow is longer. In soils where we have both soil particles and air, like we did in the field capacity sample, both the soil particles and the air get in the way of the current flow. So we have a longer flow path, and thus a lower EC. 